All right, fellow YouTubers, thank you for joining me on my channel. And today we're going to be discussing a very particular type of float and thermostatic trap made by, or was made by, the Sarco company. Um, I don't know exactly when it became Spirex Sarco, but uh, it was a fairly long time ago. The trap you're looking at probably was put in, probably was sometime about uh, after World War II. Um, and it is a six-bolt trap, but it's of an antiquated design. So let's uh, discuss quickly what a six-bolt uh, floating thermostatic trap should be like. This is also a Sarco product. Um, it's currently manufactured by Spirex Sarco. It uh, hasn't really changed all that much. And what you have is a the thermostatic part, which handles the air. This is the inlet uh, carrying the air, the water, and the steam. Uh, the air arrives first and blows through and exits here. Uh, the water arrives and pours down into this chamber, raising the float and exposing the uh, drain at the bottom there allows the water to pour through. Eventually the steam arrives, shuts the thermostatic part, but th the water continues to uh, pour through and is exited through the outlet. And that's how this should work. Older versions work on the same principle. It's mainly that the shell is where the piping is and the working parts are on a faceplate. Let's see, I got a faceplate right here. This is the float. This is the thermostatic part. This happens to be, uh, the focus is a little off on that. Yeah, this happens to be a Hoffman product. Um, notice the nice large hole for handling the startup condensate. And there's your gasket and so forth. And this here, although it is a Hoffman product, would, would fit on the Sarco and vice versa. And uh, there are a lot of, these things are almost interchangeable. The only one that isn't is the uh, the Dunham Bush or MEPCO. Uh, it's, whoop, you can see that little pin falls out and, well, let's take it out and take a look at it. Nice hole there. There's the seat. And there's the uh, stainless steel float. And moving on. Uh, that's our refresher course. So this is the model FTLC, which is in three-quarter inch. Um, they made several of these, and the major difference, although it is a six-bolt and contains a float and thermostatic portion, is that the piping is suspended and the shell is removable. And so you have to rebuild it while it's online, like so. There's the shell, there's the remains of the gasket, and um, this has been pretty well cleaned out of most of the schmutz. And here's the float show, and the thermostatic portion usually gets blown off by water hammer. It uh, looks like that. Usually when you try to take it apart, it rips right off and then you get a socket and then take that out. And the thermostatic part is still um, rebuildable. Uh, this is a Sarco product. This is the package it came in. Genuine Spirex Sarco. So it yeah, this is still still made. It's ba they basically um, thread this into a bushing, uh, which goes into this hole here. Of, uh, I think it's quarter twenty, um, if I remember correctly. Other aftermarket products are uh, Tunstall. Here's my product here, and it's a uh, TFBJ. 
3496 for the Sarko three quarter inch FTLC and variants. Um, we'll get into that later. Uh, this is basic, their basic capsule uh, with the quarter, with the, what's it, half by 20 threads, and there's the bushing, and so they can adapt their capsule to um, various products. Uh, the Barnes & Jones is the uh, 3496. Another one here, probably a little easier to read. Yep. And this is what it looks like. Um, there's the brass tag showing the date, the uh, designation. And again, the uh, it's it's formed as one unit, so you just uh, get the remains out and thread this one in, and that'll take care of the the thermos the thermostatic part. And now we move on to the float. Now this. As you can see here, it got heh, really slam, slammed by the um, water hammer. And look at the tiny, tiny hole. This thing really doesn't, was never really designed to handle uh, startup condensate. It was, it's mainly for boilers that would probably never shut off, probably coal-fired boilers. And so you'd, you'd handle a little startup condensate, and then, then there was steam all the time and this was this was fine for that but nowadays this would not be an acceptable uh, trap design it's not not rebuildable um, at all none of these there I think you might be able to find the float um, if you're lucky but again you you got a, a not a very good trap so I've been searching for rebuild parts for it because I think they did make them. Um, case in point was I came across this. This is for their FTL double odd and FTP double odd uh, float traps. Um, the box is coming apart and you have all these sort of little bits of stuff in there. The main thing which made it work Is this plate and so this is that that kit um, assembled and what you would do is you'd have a gasket here and you would then bolt this on and then this would duplicate you got a little slightly bigger hole there for for a little better condensate handling but this is basically off of their Sarco version of the F and T trap, uh, the 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 six bolter, there it is there, same thing, and they just uh, make this adapter plate. Now this adapter plate is for the what was that FTL, uh, yeah F, F, FTL double aught, and it almost but doesn't quite doesn't quite fit. Um, you can, I use, uh, sometimes I've taken a, a file and made those uh, holes a little bit bigger and uh, bolted that on and uh, rebuilt it. And I sent, sent it off to uh, Barnes and Jones and they uh, graciously tested it for me and uh, dunked it in a, and painted it up for me. And made sure. So this is a, a rebuilt uh, version, um, fully tested and and ready to go onto a system if if necessary. But uh, again, I would probably do everything I could to put a more modern version on rather than um, rather than this. Here's a, another kit. So this is for, yeah, see, there, there's, there's the documentary proof that they did make an FTLC uh, double odd kit at one time when they were the Sarco company. But I think when uh, Spirex took them over, um, it, uh, it didn't work. Let's see, you can do a freeze frame on that if you need to read that. And there's the uh, old mechanism there, which is, as you can see, is 
the uh, FTL um, is a different mechanism. It's more complex uh, lever action, probably a higher capacity uh, trap as far as handling condensation is concerned. Um, same thermostatic part. And then uh, if you put on the new mechanism, so there's a little close up of what we got here. This little kit, um, lovely asbestos gasket, um, different version of the uh, plate with the little index mark for holding the uh, um, hinge, like so. Isn't that cool? And there's the float mechanism. And there's a nice big hole, so this can handle a lot more condensate than the FTLC, definitely, even, even rebuilt. And then here's the uh, rod, and there's the um, screw for screwing on the uh, float ball here. I got an old float ball, and it's brass, lovely. Now they're, they're of course, made of um, uh, stainless steel, two-inch two float balls, like so. And the only thing missing are these darn little clips. Boy, they are a pain to put on, just to, just to let you know. Let's see if I got one here. Oh, uh, yeah, I think I've got them somewhere. <laughs> Forget it. I'm not going to bore you with that. You get the idea. So you've got these, um, uh, there should be a gasket here. Yeah, there's the gasket, which uh, threads onto that. And then, oh, yeah, there you go. And then here's the, yeah, the friction ring and gasket and float mechanism. And that's the... Um, Part for the for the float ball. Oh yeah, don't forget that rod. And so I could probably rebuild an FTL. Um, another thing always is uh, you got to get a good. Uh, you can use uh, silicone uh, form a gasket uh, material. You got to scrape off the old gasket. I was um, fortunate enough to come across a uh, a new gasket um, full of asbestos uh, for the FTLC. Um, you probably want to, I mean, the four of the six screws uh, go to daylight, and so usually that... Um, that's all to the good because uh, then they're they're more likely to be handled. But uh, you probably want to get a, a bottoming tap of 15. Uh, let me see if I can read that writing there. Uh, 15, 18. Uh, excuse me, 5 16 by 18 threads, and run it in there. Uh, a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and replace these with um, with uh, stainless steel. Um, and on the internals, uh, a uh, stainless steel cap, uh, cap screw with, um, uh, this is a quarter by 20. Um, on this portion of the shell right here, this, uh, this plate. And once you get this plate on here, then this is, yeah, this is rebuildable. And, uh, but it's a pain. Um, and... I probably wouldn't uh, rebuild an FTLC unless it was um, had a lot of asbestos around it and was uh, not going to because uh, you have to change all the piping. Uh, the The new piping is a completely different configuration, and that's where that's where you run into trouble. Um, the I'll just put this back for you. See how that goes. I've cleaned this off fairly well. And this is for your demonstrations. And again, if you all have any questions on this stuff, uh, please ask. And as always, I really appreciate your, your support. Thank you very much.